Yeah. Meeting call to order. Please join me in the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Secretary, roll call, please. Ms. Chun? Yes. Ms. Del Rossi? Yes. Ms. Doherty? Here. Mr. Lay? Here. Ms. Martin? Here. Ms. Thompson? Here. Mayor Chow? Here. Seven present. I forgot to ask the public hearing. Must it be at 7 o'clock or could it be right now? No, it can be right now. Um, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the, uh, the meeting. And I want to welcome everyone at home who is watching us tonight. Uh, we're now on the agenda with the uh, special order of business, and this is the public hearing section on the inter-district school choice program. I will now open this portion to all those in favor. Open to all those in favor. Here none, this portion is now closed. I will now open this section to all those who oppose. Open to all those who oppose. I don't see anybody here in opposition. Uh, this portion is now closed. Uh, we will vote later on this meeting, uh, later on on the agenda. Uh, we now will go to the, uh, the minutes. 4.1, approval of the minutes of the regularly scheduled Law School Committee meeting of Wednesday, April 5th, 2023. Any comments or questions by any of the members? Uh, hearing none, need a motion to uh, place on file by Mr. Lay, second by Mr. Rossi. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no, the ayes have it. Motion is approved. We now go to the permission to enter of April 19, 2023. Any comments or questions by any of the members on the permission to approve? Hearing none, need a motion to, uh, to enter by Ms. Doherty, second by Ms. Thompson. Madam Secretary, roll call, please. Ms. Chun. Ms. Del Rossi? Yes. Ms. Doherty? Yes. Ms. Delay? Yes. Ms. Martin? Ms. Thompson? Yes. Mayor Chow? Yes. Six yeas, one absent, approved. We now uh, go to the sections of motions. I will start with my motion. My motion will speak uh, for, for itself, so there's no objection. I will read it from here with uh, a minor change at the end. I will request. Um, a motion by myself, 6.1, request the superintendent work with the chair of the personnel subcommittee to poll all committee members for a meeting during the week of April 24 to discuss options and timeline for the hiring of either an interim superintendent or permanent superintendent and the necessary steps for a seamless transition of uh, leadership. Um, like I mentioned, the, the motion speak uh, for itself, but I do would like to request uh, my uh, the amendment uh, to approve by the members. Instead of going to a subcommittee meeting, I would like, uh, after receiving many phone calls from constituents and uh, different stakeholders, uh, we feel best that this meeting will be taking place in open meeting, and we can call for a, a special meeting uh, from from this motion. Do we have do I have a second? Ms. Moran, all in favor say aye. Opposed say no, the ayes have it. Motions carry. The next motion is 6.2 by Ms. Doherty. Okay. Ms. Moore. I just want to follow up just so people are aware. So I do believe that it's already been checked and the chambers are available next Wednesday. Okay. Just so people can be aware for their schedules that it, that will be get polled, but chances are it's going to be next Wednesday. Okay. Well, excellent comment. Okay. Any other comments on that one? Um, 6.2 is a motion by Ms. Doherty. Request the superintendent provide the committee with an update on pre-K and kindergarten registration numbers, percentages. I am particularly, Ms. Doherty is particularly interested in the number percentage of students who have completed immunization records in process with the Lowell Health Department, second by Ms. Chun. Ms. Doherty. Uh, thank you, and I think the motion pretty much speaks for itself. I would like to add, uh, in addition to completed immunization records, completed and accurate, uh, because I'm hearing that a lot of the um, registration information, the data is not accurate, and that's causing all kinds of delays. And as Ms. Phillips knows, we had a lot of concerns around 
um, having lotteries into the summer, that we want to get a good sense that especially the kindergarten registration where they, there's hundreds and hundreds of those are pre-K pre students. How many of those have gotten in the system complete accurate information so that we can move forward with making sure they have immunization? So that, that's really the intention, kind of an update. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? We have none on the I opposed say no, the ayes have it. Motion is carried. The next motion is also by Ms. Doherty to request the superintendent provide the committee with a budget analysis, fiscal year 21 through fiscal year 24, that lists how much additional funds each school received during that time frame, including the alternative schools, second by Mr. Lay. Ms. Doherty. Thank you, Your Honor. As my colleagues know, we have had a substantial influx of funding due to COVID and the additional challenges that have been put on the district. And this is just a way to kind of separate out take a look back on the last couple of years, that's why I gave you the, the year span, to, to make sure that we are fairly distributing those funds. And I know we've got guardrails and formulas, but I'm specifically interested in the alternative schools uh, because the we've seen the dropout rate has really plummeted, the, the graduation rate has plummeted, the dropout rate has, has gotten very high, and I want to make sure we are providing the supports to those programs. Uh, and so in a, a follow-up, just to kind of give you a heads up, a follow-up motion would be to really look at the nitty-gritty of the programs. But for this point, where we're getting into the budget season, I, I want to just get an overall sense of how much money has been um, allocated. Because we spoke, uh, maybe it was last year's budget season, that uh, no one was going to be harmed that every school was going to get additional funds, and I just want to see how that plays out with the numbers. Thank you. Hearing none, all in favor say aye, opposed say no, the ayes have it. Motion is carried. Um, if we could just slow down for a couple minutes. Um, I was just been told that we are not on um, LTC right now, so um, I want this meeting to be, um, to be um, televised publicly, so let's wait a couple of minutes. Okay, I, I apologize for, uh, for the uh, delay. Uh, this meeting, is, it is being uh, recorded and it will be aired on LTC uh, later. So it'll be uh, public and uh, people will be able to view this meeting later on. We now go to the motion 6.4. It's a motion by Ms. Thompson. Motion to ensure building principles have been offered up to date EOE training as they maintain a measure of, of human resource authority to be supplemented by report as to when these trainings were last offered and taken by principals, second by Ms. Warren. Ms. Thompson. Um, I just think it's important, um, as I've been really, you know, trying to hone in on equipping people with the proper tools to do their job effectively, and I know that building principals kind of maintain um, a little bit of the hiring authority of their own individual building, so it's really important that they have this training, the equal opportunity training, so that they know what is important, what um, things that they, again, if you're not an HR professional, you may not know some of the things that you can and can't do. So it gives them the tools to make sure that they're kind of doing their jobs without any, um, any issues, especially where it um, partakes in the hiring process. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Here are none on the favor of the aye, opposed say no, the ayes have it, motion is carried. The next motion is by Mr. Rossi, who requests the superintendent to report on the status of the compressors on the chillers at the McAuliffe School, will the system be ready for when the hot water, when the hot water weather comes? Second by Ms. Chun. Mr. Rossi. Motion speaks for itself. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Okay, none on the favor say aye. Opposed say no, the ayes have it. Motion is carried. The next motion is also by Mr. Rossi. 
request the superintendent to set up a meeting with Massachusetts Association, Association of School Committees so that the school committee can get direct guidance on recently hired outside legal counsel, second by Ms. Chun, Mr. Rossi. Motion speaks for itself. I just uh, want to be clear. I know there was some ambiguity with the, with the meeting last week. So just so we can all be on the same page with the Mass Association of School Committees. Thank you. Right. Any other comments or question? Ms. Doherty? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, through you to my colleague, I'm just not sure what clarity you're looking for from MASC. I can tell you I understand they are without an attorney right now. I did speak with Glenn Kucher. So I'm not sure what, what you want from them regarding our outside attorney. If you could clarify that for me, that'd be helpful. Mr. Rossi? Yeah, I, I, there was a lot of questions. It seemed as though last week that I guess I just want clarified by myself with them. Any other comments or questions? Uh, hearing none, all in favor say aye, opposed say no, the ayes have it. That motion is carried. We now go to the next motion, it's uh, 6.7, also by Mr. Rossi. Request the superintendent to provide the school committee with all invoices of costs incurred by BHBK law firm up to as current as possible, second by Mr. Lay, Mr. Rossi. Motion speaks for itself. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye, opposed say no, the ayes have it, motions carry. Uh, before we go to the subcommittee, I'd like to welcome back Mr. Porter, uh, student advisory from the Lowell High School, welcome back. Um, we now start with the uh, subcommittee, uh, 7.1. Um, this is a report on the Joint Curriculum and Policy Subcommittee meeting. Um, Ms. Doherty is the chairperson. Any report, Ms. Ms. Doherty? Uh, yes, we already, I reported out on this at our last meeting, so I would just make a motion to accept the uh, notes as a report of progress. Second by, can I just yeah, ask a comment? Okay, question? Ms. Mon, go ahead. I, yes, I have a question. You can I go now? Or? Yes, please. Okay. Yep. Um, just wanted to ensure, I know you gave the report at our last meeting. Did we take the vote on the, uh, the health teacher? Oh. Yes, I believe I did have a motion that every yeah. middle school will have a certified health teacher, but actually to make sure that we are clear on that, um, we are seeing that as an additional health is going to be a, a course at the middle school, not part of physical education just so everybody is clear on that. But that we did, I did make that motion. Thank you. Okay. okay. Um, no other comments or questions. Um, Ms. Doherty made a motion to accept the report of, report of progress. Uh, second by Ms. Thompson. On favor say aye, opposed say no, the ayes have it. Motion is carried. The next one is 7.2, the uh, Facilities and Transportation Subcommittee. Uh, Ms. Doherty, uh, do you have any report? Uh, yes, sir. I did report on that at our last meeting, so I would just say the uh, written report would be to place on file. Okay. Motion by Ms. Doherty to uh, accept report and have the report placed on file. Second by Ms. Chun. On favor say aye. Opposed say no. The ayes have it. Motion is carried. The uh, next section on the agenda is the reports of the superintendent. The uh, 8.1 is the response to motion 5, CSO of 3 of March 15, 2023. Um, it's a motion regarding the allocations of tutors uh, by Mr. Rossi. Any comments, Mr. Rossi? Thank you very much, Mr. Skinner. Skinner. It was a very thorough report. Um, I just have actually one question in regards to, I know a large chunk of tutors are re retired teachers who really understand the achievement reports that are given to them. But I'm also wondering if for a population of tutors that may or may not be, that may not be teachers or retired teachers, um, is there a way that they're oriented to like read the achievement reports that they're given to help the students that they're assigned to tutor in the classrooms? Okay. Thank you. Yes, um, so 
many, many of our uh, fine tutors are former teachers, and it's a great advantage to have that. There also include some um, younger people who are prospective teachers who want to get in the classroom one way or another. Um, they also may include folks who are not uh, educators before. Um, at any rate, I think schools tend to use them based on their expertise. So if you're having a tutor work with a child who has reading difficulties and you want them to understand the child's need for uh, fluency instruction versus phonemic awareness versus comprehension or something, right? You, you need to have a tutor understand the difference between uh, some assessments that give you that information. So the, the tutors, first of all, are chosen for, uh, what the, for suitable roles and any tutor that needs the training or support will have it as well. Thank you. Any other comments or questions on that one? Okay, now we'll now go to the next item, uh, which is the monthly incident report. Mr. Superintendent. Thank you. This is a standard report. It's submitted to the committee as a report of progress. If there are any questions, Ms. Phillips is available. Any comments or questions? Ms. Thompson. So I am going to suggest we pull for um, a diversity and equity subcommittee meeting. Um, I do have a couple of questions. Um, and the reason why I'm suggesting the subcommittee is because I have too many questions and I don't want to um, just out of respect. Um, what I will say on page three, um, it was obviously a notable 30 person or 30 incident rise. Um, and I was just curious as to um, I mean, obviously, when I read the rest of the report, it kind of talks about kind of what that fell in. But is there a general feeling about why the, the substantial rise? I was just curious on your end, if um, Ms. Phillips, if you had some type of, you know, thought about why, why the rise was so substantial. Yeah, Ms. Phillips. Yes. So um, school committee member Thompson, if I can look more into that, I want to make sure it's accurate. But... Um, I'll definitely look at the reasons okay, and, I and also that. see if we have a comparison for last year okay. to see if this is, you know, a turn of the season. And that's what I was kind of wondering. Mm -hmm. I was kind of thinking about that because I'm like, man, this is stark, 30, you know, 30 incidents. So I'm like, you know, is it end of the year, spring, maybe it was nice out and, you know, it, it sparked a lot going on. And then the other question I had um, was on, I'm sorry, page six no i'm sorry page five and it said there was a rise of 24 in the elementary school that was for me really um really jarring and while you're looking at that information i would really love to know about that because i don't I, our elementary numbers were there before but not in that that stark a number and it was interesting that the high school had none <laughs> so for the high school to have none and then the elementary school to have 24 that was really uh, um jarring for me so if we could when we meet if you could have that information that'd be great thank you any other comments or questions mr lay thank you mr mayor uh looking at this data um the number of bullying is almost 60 percent that's a, that's very high and that concerns me because of uh, uh we all know that bullying could lead to a lot of problems and uh, it's show that we need to do something about it and so uh, so it's something to notice. Thank you. Yeah. Any other comments? Ms. Martin? Could I just ask, too, I, I believe that, that the office has been tracking the uh, results part of this. Uh, we had talked about having uh, some kind of metric that would allow us to see how uh, students and, and, and other people who are impacted by these incidents, how they felt after the kind of process had been completed, if they had felt heard, if they had felt it was appropriate. So if we could get some of that information, I think that would be really helpful. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Uh, hearing none, we now move to the next uh, report from the superintendent, which is on the monthly enrollment report. Mr. Superintendent. Thank you, this is a standard report, submitted as a report of progress. If there are any questions, Ms. Phillips is available. Any comments or questions by any of the members? Ms. Thompson? This is just an, uh, a note, but I have been told a couple of times that for parents trying to access, um, 
access the ability to do this at home, they were having an issue with the password. Usually the user, the, the password is like, you know, specific, but the username and the password, it had to be, both had to be like the same case or whatever. So it was very case sensitive. And for people that would never think that way, that was a, a, a thing. It got fixed. They went in and, and fixed it, but I just wanted that note to be made because maybe some other parents are just like getting frustrated and they're just like, I'm not gonna do it. Um, and that might be the thing. So maybe like a little note saying passwords and usernames are case sensitive. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments or questions on the enrollment report? Hearing none, we now go on to the next uh, report. These are the reports on motions. Mr. Superintendent. Thank you. Again, just a standard report for organizing purposes, uh, submitted for as a report of progress, uh, so it can be placed on file. Well, Ms. Doria, you have a question or comment? Uh, yes, I've got a couple of questions on some of my motions, but one of them I, I can't remember where it is, so I'm just going to ask. It, we had a, I had a motion about making sure that everybody had access to having emails from the website come to their personal computers or whatever computers they wanted them to come to. And it says it's completed. So does everybody now, you know, okay. So how, how many people are, so the whole idea is if somebody from the community wants to email the school committee, they can go on the little public school website and email us. And it, it is listed here as completed, but I don't know what page it was on. And I just wanted to check and see if that was in case, in fact, accurate. So, okay, so Ms. Thompson and, and Ms. Martin, how about, do you guys get your emails from the website? Do you, Ms. June? Okay, so it's just Ms. Thompson and Ms. Martin, if we could follow Mr. Superintendent, up if you could maybe double check on that again. Uh, I'm not quite sure if. Sure, just, a webmaster did, did run that down and did check it through. I'll have him check it again. Okay, because okay. I mean, I remember getting a text saying, Can you, did you get this email? This is a test. And I said, yes. Yeah. So just wanted to make sure everybody was, because I think we get important information from the community to do this work. So that'd be great if you could follow up with that, Dr. Boyd. Then the other ones on page four, I had asked uh, back in September regarding the Family Resource Center hours. Now these are hours we used to have uh, before COVID. And it was just one evening a week that parents could come, the office was open till six o'clock. Um, and so I'm just wanted to, it's in, been in progress since September. I really was hoping that we could get that hour, those hours adjusted, um, you know, in time for the, the spring and summer registration rush. But, you know, so I just wanted to get an update on, can we follow up on that as well? I'm not sure why it's taking so long when we used to do it. I don't know if, it, if you had any comments through you. Okay, the Mr. Superintendent, if you could check up on that also, please. Absolutely. Okay. Any other comments or questions? I, I have two more, sorry. Yeah, two more, okay, Mr. Yeah, Woody. on page 11. Uh, I gotta get to page 11 myself, sorry. Okay, uh, oh, so originally this motion was made in December of 2021. And that was uh, to have an audit of our mental health services. We have invested uh, quite a bit of funds in, in increasing our staff, our social workers, uh, and mental health supports for our students. Um, and so I was looking for somebody to come in and just make sure we were doing the best in, in delivering direct services. I refiled it on April 6th of 2022. So that's over a year ago that I refiled it. Um, and it says it was completed. But on April 6th of 2022, when I asked about it, um, the response I got was that we've hired a new director of mental health services and we wanted to give this person um, an opportunity to weigh in on what kind of audit, the scope, what would be of most benefit to the district. So it has not been completed. I'm really looking to get to the next step, which is to allow the new director an opportunity to weigh in, but certainly to let us move forward um, with doing this audit. I think that everybody recognizes our community has been under a lot of stress and anxiety. Our students are still suffering from those impacts and we wanna do our best by them. So through you to Dr. Boyd, if you could just give me an update where we stand on that, because it hasn't been completed. With the Thank superintendent? You. Sure, absolutely, noted. Okay, and then the last one on page 12. 
Uh, oh, at the very bottom. Oh, I already did that one. That was the emails from the website that I couldn't remember what page it was on. All right. Thank you very much for your time. I look forward to getting uh, those motions completed or more information about them. Ms. Thompson? I also have a, fr a few, so I'll try to be quick about it. Um, page three on the bottom, um, anti-racism training. It's been in progress since August of last year. I was just curious if there's any feedback um, or movement on that, that one. Mr. Superintendent? Ms. Phillips? Sure, thank you, Ms. Thompson. Um, I don't have the motion in front of me. Okay. We did complete um, training for several of our employee groups. Um, and we do have our CLSP quarter coordinator in place now, I believe for about a month. And um, she is working um, to develop the upcoming plan for, for um, the remainder of the year into next year. Excellent, thank you. Um, n page number five, um, I had asked about housing insecurity graduation rate. So I was curious if there was any, um, and that was in uh, that was in September of last year. So I was curious if we've because we've now kind of nearing the end of the year. I was wondering if there has been any feedback or any update on that. Mr. Superintendent, Ms. Phillips. Yes. Um, so, School Committee Member Thompson, one of the things we um, we um, came to understand is that once you're identified as McKinney Vinto, mm -hmm. once you come out of that status, you are out of the status. Mm -hmm. And so we don't um, track you um, once you have left the status. It's considered a temporary status. So I think um, one of the things we discussed, and I'll follow up with our McKinney Vinto team, was is there a way that we can track someone who has been identified once, you know, see if people have been identified multiple times throughout their K-12 education and what trends are we seeing. But right now, um, we're year to year. Mm -hmm. You know, every year the status gets reevaluated and once you um, are no longer experiencing homelessness, we, um, we remove that designation from, from your file. Okay. Um, on the bottom of that same page, I have another one, um, and this is kind of just speaking about, because I had asked um, last year in, in October about a list of cultural field trips. Um, we've talked, and we've, you know, as a committee, we've obviously um, okayed several field trips and more substantial experiences, but I still am looking for a list of um, cultural field trips that are kind of shown or done throughout the district, and I was wondering um, if we have progress in that. <laughs> oh, I was waiting. <laughs> um, sure. So we have collected that information. Okay. Our um, CLSP coordinator is okay. analyzing that and seeing um, what recommendations we can make, who's going where. Okay. Um, so Excellent. Yes. Thank you. I didn't know that we were going to be just having a conversation, Ms. Phillips. I apologize. Um, the next one is on page seven, and this is about the cyber bullying guidelines. Ms. Del Rossi and I had um, spoken about that, and I was just wondering if there was any update on that or any drafted language at this point. And I believe that would be you again, Ms. Phillips. So um, cyber bullying um, or um, and, and maybe it may not be you, it might be somebody else. But cyber bullying and if there's any language or um, update on the guidelines on the website. Superintendent? We'll, we'll get back to you. We'll certainly okay. make sure we get you the update. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, I'm almost done. Um, page eight. Um, this one was, and again, I do get that this one was um, in March, but this one is really important because it's timely, and this is about the scholarships. Um, scholarships for I kind of asked for like a access night and I know that there's been a lot going on. I just don't want that one to get buried just because obviously, you know, I'm sure that a lot of scholarships have already gone out and maybe people have missed out on those things. But, you know, a way for people to have access to that would be really important. So that's just a note, not necessarily looking for a response on that one. Um, the last, well, second to last one, page 11, life skills curriculum. 
so excited about the financial um, wellness program, but I am curious about, I had spoken about something along the lines of home economics, was wondering if there was some measure of partnership at community-based organizations that we could look into. Um, for example, CBA does, I think, sewing classes, things like that. And I know, again, um, that's not something that's been done a long time, but believe you me, I think it's a skill set that people could really tap into. Um, but again, wasn't sure if there was any update on that one. And that was from, um, it says completed again, um, but I didn't get any feedback on that particular part portion of the, of the motion. So I didn't know if we had an update. Okay. Anything else, Ms. Thompson? Nope. This is the last one. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one's on page 25. Um, and this one was actually to you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it was emailed to you on uh, last year in March about signage for the playgrounds and, and the city parks. Was curious, and I know um, Councilor Drinkwater had a similar motion on the other side. Um, was curious if that had been done or what had been done in regards to signage, especially for the neurodiverse student population. So I didn't know what happened with that one. Yes, so that'd be uh, to you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> yeah, that, that the motion uh, was presented um, by Council Drinkwater mm -hmm. in the council chamber, and the, there was a response to that motion. I will ask Mr. Superintendent mm -hmm. to reach out to the city manager okay. to get the report and provide the report here to the, uh, because also a simultaneous motion by the uh, school committee member, mm -hmm. uh, yourself, yep. um, to present that, that motion response to the, um, to the uh, members here as well. Thank you so much. That is it. Right. Any other, Ms. Tom, Mr. Rossi? I just have one quick question. It's about the anonymous survey. Um, I know um, this, the school and um, school improvement and performance management committee subcommittee met on it, but I just wanted to reassure that did that survey go out to staff? I just wanted to check in. Did it go out to staff? Mr. Superintendent? Yes, Mr. Skinner. Yes, it's gone out twice. Once was um, last year before the end of last school year, uh, again mid-year, and it will go out again a bit before the end of the school year. So most schools will complete the survey twice a year. And we don't see the results, only the other place does? I'm just Right now, we, the results are posted on a dashboard for all of our schools to see. We've not had a discussion about, um, you know, public, publicly showing that information. Um, we can do it, I suppose, but be, be, we've not done that at this point. Could I make a motion to publicly see the results? Sure, you can make a motion on floor, Mr. Rossi. Can I make a motion to see the results of the survey? Certainly. Yeah, motion From last by... year and this year? If Certainly. Okay. Motion by Mr. Rossi, second by Ms. Dory. Um, all in favor say aye, post say no, the ayes have it. Motions carry. Mr. Rossi, are you done with the uh, comment here? Okay. Ms. Chun? I just wanted a little bit of update on um, the motion I put in um, May 18th, 2022, um, about the cultural events and celebrations. Um, I've attended um, two Cambodian um, New Year celebrations sitting in office, so I wanted to know, are there any other celebrations, and are there any other updates that we have? Thank you. Mr. Superintendent? Ms. Phillips? Um, thank you, school committee member Chun. So the schools did identify all of the cultural um, activities from the prior year, um, and it's sitting in a document for the CLSP coordinator, who I am so happy is here. For uh, She's been in place now for about a month. Um, so we can pull that information for you, um, but we can also take a look at this year and see, like, has it been a continuation? I do know that some schools this year may have um, celebrated um, Khmer New Year for the first time this year, but not last year. So um, we want to make sure that there's continuity, right? So um, I can pull what we have for last year. If you'd like me to pull for this year, um, we can do that as well. And then the goal is, like, having, having an expectation of, of what is happening in schools year to year. Thank you. And how are we, um, so if, for example, like my colleagues and I, we would like to attend these events, um, will we get an extended invitations um, to um, participate in these um, events? Mm -hmm. Ms. Phillips? Okay. 
Um, thank you. I'll definitely look into that in how you receive invitations, especially now that um, each of you have districts. I'm wondering how how you're informed about different activities or if you're approaching it as whole district or, you know, the schools, um, you know, within your within your individual districts. So I guess that, that would be helpful for me to know. Um, but I'll also look at what's happening across the board in all schools. Any other comments or questions? Mr. Lay? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, page 26, uh, my um, motion on uh, finding the possible, any way to uh, find a way to acquire the Jongdak school. Um, so I, I guess email to to the, um, the mayor, uh, but we haven't heard anything back. And the mayor is right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Superintendent. Thank you. Yes, uh, Dr. Hall, can you share with uh, the committee what the RFP process looks like and the conversations with, uh, with the manager's office around any acquisition of real property? Sure. So um, last week, uh, the city uh, CFO asked me to forward um, plans, that, an RFP that we had drafted, um, putting out a request for proposals on uh, five acre plus campuses uh, that may be available uh, in the city for the co committee's consideration for uh, central office space for special education. Uh, space or for expansion. Uh, there are no firm plans for that, but we thought it was our responsibility to inquire um, what was out there. The city followed up and asked uh, for the draft that we had previously routed uh, to the DPW, and I forwarded that to uh, Mr. Baldwin um, last week at his request. So I expect it will be launched um, within a week or two after their final review. Thank you, Doctor. I really appreciate the information. Um, and also, um, there was another motion related to that, uh, but I made it on the floor and not in written. It's not on this list, and that was to uh, see, see if we could have a tour of the of the facility. And so I just want to have it on here so we can keep an eye on it and uh, whether we have any. Uh, move on it, whether you did anything to, to set up the tour for the facility. Right. Mr. Superintendent. Thank you. So the purchase of uh, real estate works quite differently for a municipality versus an individual buyer. So we are working in conjunction with the city manager's office and we have been uh, informed that the, all of the steps are being taken. We'll continue to keep the committee apprised. The RFP is the appropriate step. Uh, so that RFP will be drafted and uh, we did send over feedback, input, and a uh, sketched outline from the school committees on the school committee's behalf. Uh, and the city manager's office is following uh, due diligence and appropriate procurement processes. Thank you, Superintendent. Uh, could you also make sure that that motion is on, on this list for the next time? Thank you. Absolutely. Any other comments or questions on the reports on the motions? I will now need a motion to accept the report of the superintendent 9.1 through 9.6 as a report of progress by Mr. Lay, second by Mr. Rossi. All in favor say aye. Motion is approved. Um, before we take on the next item, I just uh, want the uh, public, uh, they probably know already before the members here, we are now back live on LTC. Uh, LTC has been very busy tonight with multiple uh, meetings. But even if you miss, for people at home, even if you miss the, the first half of the meeting, um, these meetings will be rebroadcast and air on LTC for you to catch up on uh, late in the evening or whenever the schedule air again um, the next time. We now go to item number 8.5 on home education. Any comments or questions by any of the members? Move to approve by Mr. Lay, second by Ms. Morn. Uh, Madam Secretary, roll call please. Ms. Chun. Mr. Rossi. Ms. Doherty? Yes. Mr. Lay? Yes. Ms. Martin? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Mia Chow? Yes. Seven yeas approved. Section 9 on the agenda on new business 
is the vote of inter-district uh, school choice, which we had a public hearing early on uh, uh, tonight's meeting. Any comments or questions by any of, of the members? Um, hearing none, need a motion to uh, opt out of the participation in the inter-district school <coughs> choice program for grades 9 through 12 for the 2023-2024 school year by Ms. Doherty, second by Ms. Mon. Madam Secret, do you have a comment? I Ms. do Doherty? have a question. Okay. Um, I know every year this vote comes up for us. Does this mean if we vote um, that we don't want to participate in the school choice, does that mean if a Lowell Public School student wants to attend a district that does participate, in, we, they can't? Is it kind of reciprocal? We have to take students in order for our students to go to other districts through you to the superintendent. Mr. Superintendent. Thank you. This process is managed by our in-house counsel. I'm not aware of any kind of way that this committee could prohibit a child from taking part in another committee's policy to opt in. I can certainly ch check on that, but I'm not aware of any way that this would affect that. No, I, it's, it's not that. It's would this receiving district take one of our students if we're not participating in the, um, the school choice program? That's the question, not that we would stop someone, obviously. Yeah, there's Ms. Phillips. Do you have an uh, insight onto that? Ms. Phillips. No, it's in my car. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. So um, we can definitely clarify it. My understanding is that each district has its own jurisdiction and can make that decision. But for us, we have made the decision to not take out of district students. But we can definitely clarify that. Thank you. Any other comments or questions on that um, interdistrict inter district school choice? Hearing none, I think we had a first and a second already. Madam Secretary, please roll call. Ms. Chun? Yes. Mr. Rossi? Yes. Ms. Doherty? Yes. Mr. Lay? Yes. Ms. Martin? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Mayor Chow? Yes. Seven years approved. Next on the item is 9.2, the budget transfer in the amount of $202,914. Any comments or questions by any of the member? I'm sorry, I forgot the ten. I'm sorry, I forgot the ten cents. So it's two and two thousand nine hundred fourteen dollars and ten cents. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Any comments or questions by any of the members? Madam Secretary, roll call, please. Um, for, the motion by Ms. Doherty, second by Ms. Morn. Roll call, please. Ms. Chin? Yes. Mr. Rossi? Yes. Ms. Doherty? Yes. Mr. Lay? Yes. Ms. Martin? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Mayor Chow? Yes. Seven yeas approved. The next line on the agenda is 9.3. This is on the policy proposal regarding communications to the board on a school committee meeting agendas. Any comments or questions by any of the members? Ms. Doherty? I, if we could... Um I'm blanking on the words. Refer. Uh, refer the subcommittee? <laughs> we could refer this to the policy subcommittee. I, I would like to have the opportunity to ask some questions, discuss it, clarify the language before we bring it forward. So I don't want to take up everybody's time on that tonight. So I'd make a motion to refer it to the policy subcommittee. Motion by Ms. Doherty, second by Ms. Thompson. On the favor of the aye, opposed say no. The ayes have it. Motion is carried. The uh, next, that was an easy one. The uh, next item on the agenda is uh, number 10, which is um, all the convention and conference requests. Uh, need a motion to bundle and approve the, uh, all the convention conference requests. Uh, let me read them out uh, to the members and to the public. 10.1, uh, out of country and overnight travel requests for more school teacher, Tan Boy to attend a conference in Budapest, Hungary. 10.2, out of the country and overnight travel request for Lowell High School students to travel to Italy and Germany. 10.3, out of state and overnight travel request for national community schools and family engagement uh, conference. Uh, the motion to bundle us by Mr. Lay, second by uh, Ms. Chun. Any comments or questions on any of these travels? Ms. Morn? Uh, 
I would just like to, to offer the reminder for uh, particularly around 10.2 for uh, the student trip going to uh, Italy and Germany just to remind teachers at the high school who are running these and students as well that there are funds available through the um, McQuaid Adventure Fund for students who are interested in participating in the trip um, and that they should be connecting with their teachers and with uh, Mr. Stephen Jarvis if they have any interest in pursuing those kind of scholarship opportunities. Any other comments by any of the members? Hearing none, Madam Secretary, please roll call. Ms. Chun? Mr. Rossi? Yes. Ms. Doherty? Yes. Mr. Lay? Yes. Ms. Martin? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Mia Chow? Yes. Seven years approved. We now approach number 11 on the agenda, which are the communications. And 11.1 .1 is the 2023 graduation dates and Lowell High School commencement speaker. Any comments or questions by any of the members? Uh, Hearing none, need a motion to accept and place on file by Mr. Rossi, second by Ms. Doherty. Madam Secretary, roll call, please. You don't need roll call? On the paper. <laughs> I guess that's a simple vote. All in favor say aye, opposed say no. The ayes have it. Motion is carried. Uh, Ms. Thompson? I did note that when we just took a vote on the trips, there's one trip for Japan that was kind of hidden in there and it wasn't noted. And I want to make sure that we give permission to um, those people traveling there. It was a history trip, I believe. I, I didn't see it on my agenda. Was there a new one? Or was it? It's in the pack. Well, it's, in, it's, it's buried in the packet. If you read through the entire packet, it's in there. Okay. Um, and I, I, know, I just know because I remember seeing the teacher that it was attached to. So I don't know what to do with that. I don't know if that's a. Madam Secretary, if I have to take a, you, uh, if I, was there something taken privilege? out and not by maybe miscopied or something? I, yeah, I did speak with someone about that today. Okay. Um, and I had said to her it might be in the best interest of everyone if they just submitted the one for Japan separately. Okay. So it's clean with okay. a, a cover letter. And do they have time? I don't know what the time. Yes, she said it's okay. not until next year. Okay. Excellent. Well, I guess they have time. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Uh, believe it or not, you will not believe this. We are coming to the end of the meeting. But before we adjourn, any, any uh, announcement from any of the members? Uh, Ms. Doherty? I thought we were looking for clarification about um, putting something on the website regarding BHPK and how staff can get in touch with them if they have concerns. Um, I believe, Ms. Martin, did you speak with the attorneys about clarification on that? As you might recall, we had a special meeting last week where um, the uh, acting city solicitor Mr. Williams said that he didn't think we could put something on, uh, and I thought we were going to get clarification on that. So we do have some additional information. What I would say, I didn't get it in time to get it onto the agenda for this week. So I think if we're having the special meeting, um, now that we have a special meeting scheduled for next week, we'd be able to bring it up then, and, and I can get the information to everybody in advance. Okay. Okay, so. Mr. Woody? Yes, so can we just please make sure the special meeting next week has on the agenda those the issue about the okay thank you okay miss Marty, you're, you're on top of that and also let me note to uh mr superintendent uh to note that as well any other announcements or requests mr porter um i just wanted to thank you all for this great experience this will be my um last meeting as i am finishing out my um, high school track and field career as I just recently committed to Assumption University to run track there. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, well, Mr. Porter, uh, we've been blessed and fortunate uh, to have you to represent the students and sit in uh, with uh, some of the, the highlights uh, and experience of the uh, school committee uh, meetings and your opinions and your voice um, have been very, very important. Thank you for serving. You're welcome. Yes, this has been a great opportunity for me and a yeah. great learning experience as well. Wonderful. I'm glad to hear that. Any other comments? Any other announcements? Need a motion to adjourn by Ms. Thompson, second by Ms. Mon. On favor say aye, opposed say no, the ayes have it. Motion is carried. Have a great night, everyone. Second by Ms.